आई एम डॉक्टर विनोद मित्तल आई एम सीनियर कंसल्टेंट डायबिटोलॉजिस्ट एट दिल्ली हार्ट एंड लंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड हेडिंग द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सेंटर फॉर डायबिटीज एंड मेटाबॉलिक डिजीजेस न्यू डेली आई एम ऑल्सो डायरेक्टर ऑफ दिल्ली डायबिटीज केयर सेंटर टूडे वी फॉर लास्ट टू डेज इन फैक्ट यू नो वी बीन हैविंग डाय केयर कॉन विच इज़ एन इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस फर्स्ट डे वॉज वर्चुअल एंड नॉट टू डेज इट्स लाइव Uh, it's my proud privilege to uh, you know given uh, already given a lecture on NAFLD which is a neglected and uh, basically uh, unrecognized complication uh, in patients with diabetes and obesity now NAFLD world over is growing very rapidly and it is the next uh, epidemic after uh, diabetes obesity and CVD NAFLD is approximately 25% in adult population in india it is around 35% and uh, in diabetic patients and obesity it is approximately 2/3 or 70% now nfld is uh, reversible uh, in the initial stages nfld i mean is uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease this terminology is going to change to mafld that means metabolic associated metabolic dysfunction associated liver disease or uh, uh, fatty liver now uh, for nafld we need to have a fib4 score plus maybe histology and then biological markers now for mafld why this term is there that patient uh, you know uh, with basically any features of uh, uh, fatty liver that means you know increased fat inside the liver on ultrasound increased sgot pt or maybe you know other uh, inflammatory markers and is also having diabetes or obesity or any of the two metabolic features of metabolic syndrome where we have five different criteria now the point to be understood is nfld is not only a risk factor for chronic liver disease but is also a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and ckd so in other words it is a serious uh, you know uh, problem it should not be taken lightly and the patients who have nfld should always be advised to lose weight lifestyle modifications and if they have diabetes then maybe pioglitazone metformin aglt2 inhibitors glp1 or even dpp4 inhibitors and if they do not have any other problem besides nafld then only lifestyle modifications uh, studies are there with vitamin e as well as uh, say other uh, you know say saroglitazar which is a dual ppr alpha and gamma agonist and it has been approved by dcgi but not by fda there is another you know uh, a very important you know effects are agonist that is opticolic acid which is infl- anti inflammatory and also is anti fibrotic so this molecule is already available although the recommendations are not there uh, today uh, to be given to all the patients of nafld this molecule has already been tried in patients with primary biliary cirrhosis so overall what i want to convey that nafld is very common it is uh, there even in patients who do not have obesity so there uh, basically you know one has to lose uh, still weight especially you know insulin resistance has to be tackled uh, with lifestyle measures and maybe some uh, agents if required and then uh, patients who have diabetes uh, then i have already mentioned there are molecules research is already going on although opticolic acid saroglitazar are the agents which are you know uh, can be given today although no international guidelines recommend any pharmacological treatment for nafld who do not have other uh, comorbid conditions except losing weight so with this uh, you know i would just uh, like to convey my last message that nafld is quite common should never be neglected should be taken seriously it is not only uh say uh, a risk for chronic liver disease it is also a risk for cvd as well as uh, uh, chronic kidney disease so to to handle this in the early stage we should be very aggressive and ask the patient to lose weight and if required some medications and if patient has other uh, cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension diabetes obesity dyslipidemia all these have to be tackled simultaneously to reduce the risk of chronic uh, liver disease cvd and ckd with this i conclude my talk and i convey my thanks to all of you thank you